The whole point behind uh, the album that we're going to be releasing uh, this year, 2010, um, is that it's going to be an African album. So, um, African influenced album. So, um, and for anyone who doesn't know me, my name is T. Uh, my full name is uh, Tabani Naomi. And if you're Zimbabwean or South, Af South African, it's Tabani Yoni. Okay? So, uh, and we're here to discuss the track that we're just going to be releasing uh, this year. The tracks really uh, reflect my history because I was born in Zimbabwe um, and uh, I'm really, really proud of my heritage. So really I wanted to kind of express that within the music and I think we've done that. Child of Independence is a song which um, was written um, after I'd been given these beautiful chords by uh, Fabrice, uh, so Fabrice had already written the music for it, and I instantly started thinking about um, the struggles that um, people like my parents made when they first came to England from um, from Africa back in the mid to late 70s, and so Child of Independence really started evolving. I love the title Child of Independence, and again, it kind of struck home to me just how important um, my mum. Uh, uh, has been in, in influencing my life as a, as a person from a baby to a boy to a man and I remember when we grew up in a council estate in, um, in uh, Newham how she uh, always told me that we would always leave that estate in time and uh, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't stay there and uh, she was very independent as a, a young woman um, and around that time London was uh, was a very very hard place for for an African to kind of come over. I, I remember my earliest memories of uh, of the my uh, the influence of my mum was I grew up I came from um, Bulawayo uh, when I was between five and six years of age. And we settled in uh, Newham, um, which is the second poorest borough in the whole of uh, the whole of London, second only to Tower Hamlets. So Newham was was pretty rough even then. And um, my mum was very very protective of us, and she didn't want us to get involved in uh, any bad gangs or anything like that. And I just remember her having a very quiet dignity, you know. Um, when uh, she, when we lived in the area, and she she always made sure that we never went without, and uh, she was a real, she is a real um, uh, uh, rock in our, in all in all, in the family. You know, she's the rock. She's the she's the person that we we always kind of go to. Uh, Child of Independence is really written about her and her influences and um, and her background as a person. So. Goes to you, Mama. Mwah. Growing up in England, as you can tell, I've got an English accent, I've got a London accent, and uh, I feel, um, all through my African heritage, I'm very, very proud of my name, which means rejoice. Tava uh, uh, Tava means to be happy, and so I've, I've uh, you know, I really love my name and. Um, uh, I never, never understood when I was younger why I was called someone different to John and uh, Darren. I wanted to make, fit in like all children uh, do. And uh, there was a period when I actually changed my name because I just wanted to fit in with everybody. But uh, that was a silly time and uh, I'm glad that um, that phase is over because, you know, I am who I am. And, uh, I'm the son of an African man, you know, so, yeah. The, uh, there's a famous Zulu warrior called um, Gosla Mandla, and I wanted to um, write a track called Gossi and talk about the, uh, just, just the defiance of the African man, and um, Zulu warriors are, are arrogant, strong-minded uh, individuals, and Gosla Mandla, um, for me, epitomised what a true Zulu warrior, a Zulu warrior is. And so I wrote Ngossi um, about about, um, uh, about him. Really. 
where in Africa there's a tradition where a boy will go to a girl's house and if he wants to um, propose he'll take um, some money to the to the girl's house and um, we call it Nawala. So um, it's a bit like the dowry um, as well as system um, I think the Indians use dowry. So really Nawala is basically a, a, an African love song, you know, um, and we're just talking about the rituals um, that we, we go through as Africans. Um, it's a really tender song as well. So. Uh, fantastic, fantastic backing vocals for from Sabelo Mutile. Uh, God bless you. Brother. I met Sabelo Mutile um, uh, a few years ago when he was in a group called um, Igagu, Igagu Eight, and Igagu are or were um, a twelve-piece uh, African a cappella band. And I bumped into the guys uh, via um, friends, and um, Sabella got a hold of me through uh, MySpace. Um, and we met up in London, and I said to him, "What's happening with the band?" He said, "The band is split up, sadly, because uh, they're a fantastic band." But then what happened? I said, "Well, look, if you if you're a loose end, I might have a project which you can get involved in with me." And I told him I was writing this uh, African album with uh, Fabrice. Really Far in the Village is, uh, is basically, I, I haven't written the lyrics, I was focusing on this, the situation in North and South Sudan and um, I did a, a show a few years ago for the BBC with a guy called uh, Emmanuel Jow and uh, he came along and joined me on stage and he used to be a child soldier so uh, Far in the Village really was about the situation that's happening in Sudan because uh, literally, you know, there the are some horrific things happening and uh, people are um, doing unspeakable things to families, you know, young children and uh, tearing communities apart. So Fire in the Village really was a song to kind of highlight um, what I feel is a, a situation which should be really given more focus. Uh, and it, it's really about Sudan and North Sudan. So. It's really about um, treachery and betrayal. And uh, that's all I'm going to say in Snakes in the Grass. <laughs> <laughs> so I trouble with a song which, uh, when you're a young guy, you know. Um, you can get you can get yourself into too much trouble, and too much trouble really is about uh, mixing with the wrong type of woman. You know, uh, the type of woman that your mother always warned you about, and you never listened to her. So, <laughs> and it's just basically um, uh, about an old uh, old relationship I had years ago with uh, somebody who was just too much trouble. And my mum did warn me, and I never listened. To her. But it was fun. <laughs> it's a greeting, okay, so you say Yebo, Vinjan, Yebo, and uh, so when you say Yebo, you're saying hello, so it's just a greeting, and Yebo really is just, uh, 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 I, you know, we, we, um, we use it as a term of, uh, of, of an affectionate greeting, you know, um, so when I wrote the song, I wanted to kind of write something based around that ethos of greeting somebody in a, in a really cool African vibe, so a uh, Zimbabwean vibe. And uh, Yebo really is, is just, uh, it's just a simple hello, you know, like, Yebo, Yebo. Uh, my mum was featured very heavily in my mind when I was writing the lyrics. Um, and I don't know, I guess it's really, uh, it's really just a, a, a thank you for her really. So in a way, I've left a statement of, uh, of what I really feel uh, about her through my music because um, she's a very, very important part of my life and um, um, I've no qualms in saying it, I'm not ashamed to say it, but I, I love her dearly with all my heart. So the album really was just a, 
uh, Spongile, the song itself, is um, uh, my mother's middle name. Uh, her name is Gladys Spongile uh, Naomi. Um, again, if you're Southern African or South African, it's Gladys Spongile Nyoni. And so I wrote the song Spongile about her. So I hope she doesn't mind, but you know, it's the uh, it's the the clearest way I could tell her on record that I loved her without sounding all mushy and uh, so they're all very personal tracks but um, as a whole the album the album I feel holds up really really well and I think people will enjoy it for what it is which is uh, a good bunch of songs um, with some fantastic musicianship great production by Fabrice um, um, some great songs and, and, some, and there's some real some really really heartfelt uh, singing and uh, yeah we, we really really hope you enjoy it either way we'll still be out there performing it so um, but try and buy a copy because it could be good for your health yeah, that's my phone sorry Oz Ozzy said I let him know, Ozzy said he's uh, he... <laughs> Which, Yeah, yeah, how you doing? You alright?